You know, this is fennel, eh? It's like part of herbal. You try. This is very good for you. Eat it. It's healthy. Bella Galios is a citizen of East Timor, a country that gained independence in 2002. The country still lacks an industrial infrastructure, and nearly half of its citizens live on less than $2 a day. The country basically starts from ashes, zero ground. Uh, it's going to be a lot of effort. Yeah. Of course, it's a lot of work, but we have to do it. In 2015, Bella founded Leoblora Green Village as a center of operations for the rebuilding efforts. Here, Bella teaches farming skills to impoverished women, helping them to obtain a living. She also volunteers by instructing children who haven't had the benefit of a thorough education. I want Timo to really move with a better situation for women, for young children, for the youth. But let's start with the basic life. Her story. In the southwest mountains of East Timor is the village of Maubisi. 80% of the citizens of East Timor support themselves through agricultural work, but insufficient irrigation systems and poor familiarity with farming techniques results in low yields. Many families struggle even to put food on the table. Leo Blora Green Village was established at an altitude of over 1,500 meters. Bella made good use of the land she inherited from her grandfather, accepting donations from friends and locations such as Australia and Canada to establish a school and farm. The farm grows 30 kinds of produce, including strawberries, lettuce, and avocados. Agriculture is a very a key point to generate um, family income because everybody have land, but they don't make a best use of it. So encouraging people with skills, knowledge about how to make use of their land is very important. Careful, careful. Good morning, Bella. Instead of the inner farmland, we're going to work on the land up front today. Let's do it together. Of course. Let's head over. 25 women have trained in farming skills and take turns at shifts on the land. On this day, four are hard at work. Without means of transport, they spend nearly two hours each day walking the mountain road. The rainy season is coming right up. When it starts raining, we'll plan out our crops. The dry season stretches from June to November. Even in late October, the temperature is as high as 30 degrees Celsius, greatly reducing the harvest. Bella's group pulls out weeds to keep them from sapping precious nutrients from the vegetables. Yank them all out. Don't use the hoe to pull weeds. You'll kill off the crops. We should pull them by hand? Right, just like before. The ground is too dry. Don't pull that out. Sorry, it's the wrong one. Bella teaches them the basic points she learned from her mother, who was especially skilled at vegetable gardening. The manure is hard, too. When the earth gets softer, we can work it in. Got it. Year by year, the harvest gradually improves. 
But without a formal distribution system, they can't easily sell their wares in the city. In response to this problem, Bella comes up with a new way to market their produce. Nearby the farm is a hotel Bella manages. She's arranged for the hotel restaurant to serve their vegetables. I just do my job about asking how's the food. It's a homely food. Just like homely food. That's yes. what uh, we're trying to do. Over a thousand people stay at the hotel each year. Among them are visitors from overseas who take an interest in Bella's cause and members of NGOs seeking to improve the region's infrastructure. Rooms cost $50 a night. Much of the profits go to purchasing plants and tools for the village farm. Today, Bella was visited by two women who have been picking up farming techniques from her. How are the potatoes? They're a little dry inside. The green onions are nice and big. The women use the new knowledge in their gardens to raise more vegetables than they need for their own households. Bella purchased some of this produce. By farming and selling, the women are able to sustain an income of $80 a month. Being Timorines, being women, is very hard. Uh, the country is pretty much patriarchal society. Women are made to believe, the society made women believe that they are second citizens. They are not equal to men. Most men, they are focused on their money for their own personal interest, drinking, smoking, things that they like to do. By giving them economic power, then it might help to reduce the, their dependency on men. They too can have access to, you know, their basic needs. Rosa has been taught by Bella for three years and now sells to her twice a week. Now I take care of the family budget. I just give my husband 25 or 50 cents for cigarettes. Rosa lives in a house that's a walk of around an hour from Leoblora Green Village. She's a mother of 14 children. Now that she's enabled an income from farming, her husband Miguel helps out with the work as well. I used to spend all my money drinking, but I gave that up. I use the money on my kids' education now. Thanks to the source of income, they can now afford school supplies. Four of their children attend middle school, and one is in high school. Previously, their meals were mostly limited to potatoes and corn, but with Bella's help, Rosa's now able to buy rice and feed her children healthy meals with a wide range of homegrown vegetables. There's more. Eat your fill. When you investing in women, especially married women, mother, the family will be safe because most mother, their money, their resources, they focus on the family well-being providing good food on the table for their children, and then basically the whole family will be uh, healthy, secure in terms of food-wise. That's why I focus on women, uh, especially married women. Yeah. Bella was born in 1972 in Dili, the capital of East Timor. She was one of nine children. When she was just three, 
East Timor was invaded by the neighboring country of Indonesia, which annexed it the following year. An official survey estimates that during the occupation, over 100,000 people perished due to brutal violence and starvation. Having lost two elder brothers to malnutrition, when Bella turned 16, she secretly joined a group seeking to restore independence from Indonesia. She sought donations to their cause and sheltered members in her home. A lot of Timorians play double life. One life support Indonesia. You're acting like you support them, and another life you're against them. I survived because of all that. When Bella was a college student, she encountered a life-changing opportunity. The Indonesian government offered her an academic scholarship to study in Canada. And then they even make me kiss Indonesian flag, make a promise, yeah? Pick up Indonesian flag, kiss it, promise I will be good in Indonesia, you know, with full hearted, promoting East Timor, to be part of Indonesia, all this. So I did. That's what I show you. I show them. It's convinced. But then after I reached Canada, I decided to stay and work against them. She immediately claimed political asylum in Canada, but she remained concerned for her family's safety. Even though I was worried that I might put them in a risk, they might be in prison and stuff, or being killed, or being uh, interrogated, uh, intimidated. But yeah, I just say, just do it. After being recognized as a political refugee, Bella spoke at several international conferences to spread awareness of the plight in East Timor. At the time, restrictions on foreign press access to East Timor had rendered life under the occupation all but invisible to those living overseas. So all this effort I've been putting myself into, walking in everybody's shoes, all the Timorians who suffer, who has no voice, who cannot leave the country, I tried to be representing each and all of them. So I speak with fire, like, I turn every anger in me into a powerful word. Following a shift in the Indonesian political climate in 1998, policy toward East Timor changed greatly. The new president made remarks suggesting the possibility of self-government or autonomy for the region. This attention created a new momentum toward East Timor's independence. The following year, a referendum was held on the issue, with almost 80% of votes cast in favor of independence. For the first time in five years, Bella returned home to find her family safe. She later became an aide to the president and was tasked with visiting various regions of the country and reporting on their conditions. As she traveled around the country, she felt a sense of duty to improve the lives of the women and children she met, inspiring her to found Leoblora Green Village. Why I am so involved in those issues, because I come from those darkness. Being a child, I was not treated as a child. Being a woman, I was not treated as a woman. I was, there was no such things that I would like to go back to those times of darkness. That's why I want to make a difference. I want to change. The inspiring women of Asia. We take a look at the source of their motivation. So this is the box that I keep most of the important pieces of my things from my mother. This is her hair that I keep it when she was still alive. Bella's mother, Teresa, passed away in 2014. And the memory of my family when I was young, it was not a great memory. Nighttime is, a, for me, is always a horror. Because um, I've seen my father beat my mom up all the time. 
And there's one time where my father used a huge wood, I think it's part of a chair that broken. But in that wood, there is a nail, long. And he hit right in my, my mother's thigh and then stuck to it. Bella was the one to pull the nail out from her mother's leg. We're just young kid. We couldn't do much to help. And of course, we're screaming, asking for dad, you know, to stop hurting mommy, you know, hurting my mom. But of course, we're only screaming, and he did what he wanted to do, and nobody can stop him. According to a government survey conducted in East Timor, over 40% of married women in the country have experienced domestic abuse. Bella's mother filed for divorce. It was almost unheard of in East Timor at the time, and she began raising her children alone while working as a teacher. But my mother, you know, she always strike us, show us she's always strong. She was walking in the street with my brother. She saw a man beating up uh, a woman. The man was so big. My mother was only one meter high. She went and actually saved the women from the men that beat her up in the street. And so those examples, you know, she did it every, almost every day. But just as Bella returned from Canada, her mother began to exhibit symptoms of dementia. She started looking after her mother, combing her hair every day and gathering up the fallen strands. A long-held belief in East Timor is that keeping nails or hair from the departed will allow their soul to dwell nearby. I told my family, I told those who are close to me, I said, uh, when I die, you know, make sure put this hair in my coffin so I can take it with me. If I'm lucky enough, maybe I can meet my mother. Come over here. Come on. On weekends, children gather at Bella's school. In the countryside of East Timor, children are constantly busy gathering water or looking after younger siblings and often can't make it to school every day. Many fall behind in their studies and only half of children progress to middle school. Bella's school offers classes free of charge to children aged 7 to 12. They cover common subjects such as English and math. During lunch break, children are provided with a meal made from homegrown vegetables. Many local children suffer from malnutrition due to poverty, preventing them from focusing on their schoolwork. In the three years since the school's founding, over 500 children have learned here. It's so important for the members of a family to be kind to each other. But as you know, some families aren't that way. Bella makes a point of giving the children a solid moral education. Miss Bella? Why did you open the school? You want to know why? Yeah. Because it's you all who will grow up in this generation. It's so that when you're all grown-ups, you'll know what you need to know when I'm an old lady. This school is for all of you. When you've grown up so big and strong, I want you to do great things in the world in my place. I know you can. It'll be your turn. I still want to do big things for the country, but I can only start small, small. Be the candle, be the light for others who are in the dark. Maybe my light is not big, but it's always there, light for them.